everybody, welcome back. The next section of the book is called The Moment of a Couple. Now, I'm going to tell you, there's no need to get worked up over this section. I'm going to show you how to do this. For 99% of the problems, this works. And you don't have to learn a new method. Okay, Hitler would have you take these each one of these couples, and all you do is you take one of the forces of a couple, right? That's 50 and 50. What's a couple? Do you remember what a couple is? It's uh, two forces of equal magnitude in opposite directions on parallel lines of action, right? And he would take you and have you take one of them and multiply by the perpendicular distance between those two to come up with the moment around a respective axis. So that is one way to do it. But I'm going to propose to you we do it this way, and that is, let's just treat it like it, like instead of treating them like a couple, treat them like they're individual forces, right? Instead of seeing there's two couples on this, say there's one, two, three, four forces. And then just work it like a regular problem. That way we don't have to learn a new technique. We can just work it like any old problem. And I think it works pretty good. Okay. So this problem says determine the distance D, which is not given. But the distance D is from A to B. Okay. So it, that's, that's here. Okay. From that corner to this corner is D. Okay. So that the resultant moment has a magnitude of 20 newton meters. Okay, what does that mean? The resultant moment, we'll call it MR, right? Equals 20 newton meters. Now that's resultant, okay? So that's going to mean that what, what we do is we take the moment about the x, which will be i hat squared, plus the moment about the y, j hat squared, plus the moment about the z, k hat squared, and um, square root it, right? Just like we do a, the, the magnitude of a, of a vector, the magnitude of the moment works the same way. So we're going to find the things that make me spin around the x, the y, and the z, square them, add them together, take square root, and then that whole thing needs to equal 20, okay? So let's start off by finding out what is the moment about the x, the moment about the y, and the moment about the z. All right, so let's start off with things that make me spin around the x. All right, so how big is the moment around the x? Well, here's the x-axis, okay? Now, number one, we remember that x forces can't cause rotation around the x-axis. So since this 50 and that 50 are in the x direction, no moment, okay? What about that guy, that 35 right there? Look where he goes, cha, 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 whoa! He goes right through the x-axis. So that guy makes no moment. What about that guy? Yes, okay? That guy rotates, remember your eyeball's looking towards the origin, okay? There's your eyeball, looking towards the origin. That guy's gonna rotate me clockwise, so he's gonna be negative, so minus, 35. Now here's the question, how far away? Well, from the x-axis, that 35's line of action is this far away right there. And what is that value? Well, you know what? That's d cos 30. Because this guy over here is d sine 30, okay? Going this way. So that's the distance I need right there, d cos 30. So times D cos 30, okay? There's one. Number two, things that make me spin around the Y, okay? Here's the Y way back here, okay? Now the 235s, do they make me spin around the Y? Well, they're both 350 millimeters away, right? From the Y axis, you go out 350 millimeters, and there's a plane that contains both of those 35s. Well, one of the 35s rotates you counterclockwise, but the other one rotates you clockwise. And so the 35s wind up canceling each other out. They don't make any moment around the Y because now each one individually does, but when I add them together, this one's positive 35 times 350. This one's negative 35 times 350, and so they just fall away, okay? So what about this 50 here? Uh, let's follow him. Cha-cha-cha, pow, right through the, it goes through the y-axis, doesn't it? That's a cha-cha force. 
That 50 goes through the y-axis, it makes no moment. So the only one left is that guy over there, okay? Does he make moment, okay? Here's your eyeball looking towards the origin, okay? And the answer is yes, because this guy here, right? If that line of action, if you drew that out, is actually above the y-axis. So it's gonna make it rotate clockwise, isn't it? So that one's gonna be negative. So the y is gonna be negative. 50, my pen is about to run out of ink, but I have another one right here, okay? 50 times how far away, okay? Well, from the y-axis, which is in this xy plane, right, this thing is gonna cross above the axis, this height here, d sine 30, so times d sine 30. 30. Okay. And the last one is things that make me spin around the Z. Okay. What do we have around the Z? Well, again, Z can't cause rotation around Z. So these two here are in the Z direction. And so there's no moment from those guys. What about this one? Let's follow him. Wow. He goes through the Z axis. So that one's knocked out. What about that one? Uh, yes, he's gonna make it spin that way, right? And again, looking towards the origin. Okay, there's my eyeball. That's gonna make me spin clockwise, right? So that 50 is gonna be negative. All of them are negative. Minus 50 times how far away from the Z? Do you know? All right, what is it? What'd you say? All right, it's D cos 30, isn't it? Okay. Okay. Now, all I have to do is plug this into that equation. I think I can get there. So the cosine of 30 is 0.866. The sine of 30 is 0.5. The cosine of 30, 0.866. Okay. So let me just, uh, let me simplify this a little bit with my calculator um, on 35 times 0.866 equals 30.31. So this whole thing, negative 30.31D, okay? This guy, half, okay, I know that one, I can do it in my head, minus 25D, uh, and then this guy, 50 times 0.866 is 43.3. So how do I find this? Well, it's this here. It's 30.31d quantity squared plus 25d quantity squared and then minus, no, plus, sorry, 43.3d quantity squared. Why did I leave off the negatives? Well, because you square a negative, it becomes a positive anyway, so no big deal. Uh, and then we take the square root of all of that, and that has to equal 20, okay? So let's see, 30.31 squared plus 25 squared plus 43.3 squared equals... 3418.6d uh, squared, okay, equals 20. All right, and then the square root of that, remember we can take the square root of each one of these since they're multiplied together. If they were added, then we couldn't do that, but they're multiplied, so... I get 58.5d uh, equals 20. So d equals 20 divided by answer equals 0.342. And what is the units here? The units on this, millimeters. All of these were in millimeters. Oh, 
That's not true. That's not true. Um, because everything we multiplied here was in newtons, and then D, we don't know what that's in, but what did we set that equal to? We set it equal to newton meters, so this is actually in meters, isn't it? Whoo, that was close. 0.342 meters is equal to, now we can put it in millimeters, 342 millimeters, right? I was like, man, that's not very big for an answer. That's because it was wrong, Dr. Hansen. Oh yeah. Okay, so there you go. So, moment of a couple, if it confuses you, just treat them like individual forces and work it just like we've done every other problem, okay? I hope that helps and I'll see you next time.